For biconditional statements, the main thing to understand really is what happens with a conditional, and then that essentially a biconditional is just two conditionals stapled together. That P if and only if Q is only false if P and Q don't match in truth value. And the reason why that happens is because essentially P if and only if Q is the conjunction of if P then Q and if Q then P. It's the two, like I said, stapled together, or in terms here with that little conjunction symbol. So when we're talking about the general truth table there, if they are both true, then P if and only if Q is true, if P is true and Q is false, be careful about that, then the biconditional is false because it doesn't fit the first half of the conditional. And then if P is false and Q is true, then the biconditional is false because it doesn't fit the second half of the biconditional. And then if both are false, it is doubly trivially true. It's kind of silly to think of it that way, but essentially what we're looking for is mismatched truth value. That's how we determine whether or not a biconditional statement is true. So let's take another example here so we can get a better understanding of how this case works, just like we did with the last one. So for this, we want to construct a truth table for the compound statement P and Q, if and only if Q implies not P. So this is going to be quite a mouthful, and we're going to have to be really, really careful going through our steps here. So I'm going to try and take it slowly, talking my way through this table, and hopefully the nice colors will help exemplify and illuminate what's going on as we're working here. So first, we're going to start with the two simple statements this is built from, P and Q, where we have our four cases, like usual. Then, because it's the first part we have there, I'm going to make the conjunction P and Q, which as we saw in the last section, is true only when both are true, so just in that first case. Then, because I want to get Q implies not P, I'm gonna make not P, so I'm gonna flip all the values for that negation from P, false, false, true, true. Then I'm going to take Q implies not P, so I have to match up what happens with Q to what happens with not p, where in that first case we have true false, that is the antecedent is true and the consequent isn't, so that is a false statement in the conditional form. I'm gonna be picky with my words. Then in the second case we have that they are both false, so the conditional is trivially true. In the third case they're both true, so the conditional is true in the best way possible. And then for the last case, Q is false, so trivially we get a true conditional. And then finally from there we stick these two together where we end up seeing that the conjunction never matches the conditional. Then in the first case it's true-false, then false true, false true, and false true. So because we need things to match in order to, for them to be true with a conditional statement, well, this conditional is unfortunately always false. By conditional, to be clear. And this, as I mentioned in the last section, is an example of a thing called a contradiction. It's a thing that cannot possibly be true. We don't care too much about contradictions in this class specifically, but it is worth mentioning here that we did get something that can't be right. You can't possibly connect these things together, and hopefully it might make sense why these don't go together, because the first part there is P and Q. And if we need both of those to be true, then we need both of them to be true. Meanwhile, for the second half of that biconditional, we have Q implies not P, which means that P kind of can't happen if Q does. Not exactly, but in a sense, it's very close to that idea. So those two parts that go into our biconditional are asking for completely different things. And in the same way that thinking back to chapter two, often the best way to define an empty set is in terms of two things that can't happen at the same time and trying to describe a set of those objects. Here we get a contradiction because we are trying to make two things happen at once that cannot go together. So that's all of our pieces here for truth tables. That's all of our parts for how these things work. Let's just 
finish off here with a recap on how all of our options fit together, as well as one more applied example.